Good morning. My name is Mercedes Moss, and it is Monday, 31st December 2018. It's 3.16 a.m. I've been rather busy over the past few days, so I'm making here while the sun shines in doing a live audio at this hour because I'm going to be busy later. However, I felt I've been well. I've been, I felt I should speak about the human spirit before birth. You could even say maybe before um, the spirit even inhabited the flesh in the womb. I I, I, I dare not say that I have any substantial amount of information on the topic. You know, from you know, I, I know what's things that I see in the invisible realm, but I'm uh, basing my discussion today on the on the uh, writings in the Book of Enoch and in the Bible. Hello, Tanze. Tanzania, welcome. I think it's Bermuda. Welcome. Happy New Year. So, uh, welcoming, I'm welcoming Tanzania, Pamplin, and Happy New Year to you. Please share this audio. And if you're here whenever in the future, I'd like to ask you to share this audio so that somebody else can receive the information. So, I've, I've been talking about the human spirit and writing since 2007 about the human spirit and my understanding keeps in increasing. And in order to understand the human spirit before birth or to gain further information, I went back to one of the earlier, earliest books that is available to humans, and that is the book of Enoch. You know, Enoch was cited in the scriptures directly by Apostle Jude as Enoch, seventh from Adam, and even in the book of that quotation came directly out of the book because in the last chapter, the epistle of Enoch, Moses who wrote that, not Moses, uh, Noah, sorry, who wrote that book, that chapter apparently mentioned Enoch as the seventh from Adam. And in fact, the book of Enoch, as I said in previously, is liberally quoted throughout the Bible from Moses all the way down to Revelation. In fact, when you read, it's almost like reading a carbon copy of many, many parts of the Holy Scriptures that we have available. However, humans have been writing books from the dawn of time. And so this is what the book of Enoch says about humans. So first of all, we know from the book of Genesis that uh, God breathed into to, to Adam and he became a living soul. Hey, Richard, happy new year. What are you doing up like me? So God breathed into Adam and he became a living soul. Now, I read through, I took a bit of time this morning reading through the book of Enoch. And I knew before that Enoch had cited, has the phrase, Lord of Spirits. So Enoch in the book liberally quotes the, the rights about God as the Lord of Spirits, and in Book 2, which is the Book of Parables, the phrase, the Lord of Spirits, is mentioned 78 times, on uh, about 78 times. Maybe I, I have fewer or more, you know, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so the Book of Enoch identifies God as the Lord of Spirits, and in fact, when you read the book of Enoch, 
we begin to understand from the way Enoch wrote about humans that they are spirits in the earth. In fact, that, that phrase is cited several times in the book of Enoch, spirits in the earth. And that is something we need to really fix firmly in our understanding. In order to understand the human spirit before birth and even in the eternal realm, before the spirit person came into the earth, that we are not really bodies, we are not really flesh, we are spirits. And so in the book of Enoch, you, you, you read about the spirits of the ungodly and how the spirit of the ungodly will go to hell and they will, you know, the eternal, the punishments of the spirit of the ungodly. We, we, we read about the spirits of the children of uh, the earth in the book of Enoch. So there's, you know, we will really, really, I would encourage you to read the book of Enoch in order to glean further understanding of truth. Because as I said prior, Enoch was directly cited by Jude, you know, as the seventh from Adam in, in the seventh ruler in the earth from Adam. There's a lot about earth history that we do not know, and we've been fed a lot of junk. Let me just share with you, um, a, what is the word, a cross-reference in the Holy Scriptures that we know more familiarly. Uh, in Hebrews 12, 29, Apostle Paul talked about God being the father of spirits. So there is no contention between the book of Enoch and the Bible. And we begin in Genesis 1. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then when he created man, God breathed into man. And I, 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 I have a video somewhere in which that breathing was a gentle blowing. God sort of, you know, breathed his spirit gently into man. So God is the father of spirits. And then in Mo, uh, Moses, in Numbers 16, 22, and Numbers 27, 16, talks about God of the spirits of all flesh. So the, 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 you know, um, we are spirits and, and the flesh, the, the body is just the encasement that carries us around. Additionally, in Enoch, book of Enoch, chapter 39, verses 11 and 12, Enoch says that he filleth, quote, he filleth the earth with spirits. So humans are really spirits. We, we are more than body. The body is just the encasement. And it's a pity that we take so much time. We, we take care of the body. We buff it. We exercise it. We comb the hair. We do the nails. We take supplements. But we, we do not pay attention to our spirits which are our eternal immortal elements, uh, inner man, the inner being, the hidden man of the heart. And we do not, we need totally neglect the spirit because we are not knowledgeable about truth. But the spirit of humans needs spiritual uh, elements to sustain it. And one of those elements is the word of God. Now, again, in the book of Enoch, we're still talking about the spirit of humans before creation, but I'm just laying the foundation that God is the Lord of spirits, 78 times in Enoch chapter book 2. He's the father of spirits, Hebrews 12, 9. Uh, he, uh, number 16, 22 and, and 27, 16, God is the spirit. It, it talks about God of the spirits of all flesh. And then in Enoch, book 2, chapter 39, verse 11 and 12, he filleth the earth with spirits. So remember, we are spiritual entities. 
Okay, so now let's go on further. I read through the book of Enoch in order to find out what he said about those spirits of humans before they were born. I didn't find a direct reference to people before they were born, but directly. Hello, Cheryl. Yes, Happy New Year, Ronald Bailey. Hello, Dr. Ronald. God bless. Welcome. Yes, but I found in chapter 40, verse 1 and 2, that Enoch talked about the thousands of thousands and the ten thousands by ten thousands, a multitude beyond measure. And we know that in the book of Revelation, Apostle John spoke about the, an innumerable company of people that he saw before the throne in heaven. So I'm not sure right now if Enoch is speaking about those same, but in his era, you know, it, it, this, this, he, he was speaking before the time of uh, Apostle John, who saw thousands and, an, you know, an innumerable company of spirits. It would have to be before the throne of God. So I, it is possible that Enoch here could either be speaking about the angels, spirits of angels, or spirits of people. But we know in heaven that uh, there are human spirits and there are angels who are not the same as humans. The, the scriptures say he makes his angels spirits. Now, <coughs> excuse me, in Enoch book 1, chapter 15, verse 7, I found an, another reference to the fact that spirits, the, 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 this, this one really says that the, the heavenly inhabitants are spiritual beings. It says you were formerly, he, uh, Enoch was speaking about the fallen angels. You were formerly spiritual, living the eternal life and immortal for all generations of the world. So we know that the inhabitants of heaven, whether they are angels or spirits of humans, are spiritual being and we, beings. And we know that from 1 Corinthians 15, Paul talks about the spiritual body. There's a difference between the spiritual uh, existence in the eternal realm or the invisible realm and the existence of a spirit in the, the earth realm. So we know God breathed into man and man became a living soul. So in the invisible realm, in the heavenly realm, a spirit lives that eternal life. Because although these angels, Semjaza and Azazel and the others fell, they were formerly spiritual, living the eternal life and immortal, so they would have never died. Okay, in verse 7, again in book 1, fifth, verse, chapter 15, Enoch spoke about, speaks about the spiritual ones of heaven. So in heaven, there is an, a spiritual body, a spiritual existence. Okay, verse 10, Ronald Bailey is saying, Be cautious that it is through man that other men were to be produced in the earth. The human spirit develops simultaneously with the rest of his person. Okay, so I am not talking about how the human, thank you for that comment, um, but I'm not talking about how the spirit develops. I'm just talking about the spirit of man before uh, birth. I, I don't know how the spirit develops. I'm just talking about the fact that the spirit of human comes from God. It's an invisible entity. I, I dare not talk about the development before birth because I don't have that information right now. We just, I'm just speaking about the, the spirit coming from God, God being the father of spirits. I hope I'm being clearer. 
God is the father of spirits. We came out from God and in the invisible realm, in the heavenly realm, before birth, there is a spiritual existence. I hope that is uh, clearer uh, to you, Pastor Bailey, but thanks for your comment. Okay, so that is basically what I'm saying. And then now, in uh, verse 10 of book 1, chapter 15 of book 1, verse 10, uh, Enoch said, As for the spirits of heaven, in heaven shall be their dwelling, the spirits of the earth which were born upon the earth. So the, the point I'm trying to make is that we need to remember that humans have a spiritual element and we must not forget that we must not ignore the development of the spirit because we are more than bodies so uh this is a kind of i i i i understand where pastor Billy is coming from because we do not really speak much about the human spirit but now that so it's it's like i'm treading on unfamiliar territory and my knowledge is developing. But let's look at the scriptures now. Psalm 139. From this psalm really helped me in my um, development of my self-image. And I am reading from the ESV version because the King James is a little unwieldy to read. So the ESV is a little simpler. In, in written Psalm 139 from verse 13 for you formed my inward parts you knitted me together in my mother's womb I praise you fearfully and wonderfully made wonderful are your works my soul knows it very well my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret intricately woven in the depths of the earth your eyes saw my unformed substance in your book were written every one of them the days that were formed for me when as yet there was none of okay i lost connection so <laughs> okay so ronald Bailey is saying to venture to suggest that the human spirit exists before he he is conceived is going beyond the biblical revelation well the bible says god breathed into adam god breathed a spirit into adam so we know the spirit of man comes from god the scripture says he's the god of the spirits of all flesh so uh, all spirits came out of god and god is pre-existent so if we all came out of god we existed sometime in the eternal realm. I believe I'm not trying to form any doctrines or theologies. I'm just exploring something that we need to begin to pay a little more attention to. But thanks for your comment. So here in Psalm 139, we see that uh, David acknowledged that his body parts or his substance or his parts were are written in a book in heaven and that God knows all of his parts. So it, it tells us that God has a plan for, for every human being and that God knows us. So if we are to take the parallels from the Garden of Eden in which God formed the body and put the spirit in the body, I would have to infer that when a human is formed in the womb, that the spirit is also formed to go along with that body because the body, the scriptures say, without the spirit is dead. And I, I, I'm wondering if at what time is the spirit placed because if we came from uh, the formation of two living 
cells, a sperm and an ovum, it is possible that the spirit is placed into the human at the time of conception because that is the, whether or not we want to believe it. Uh, a cell is the foundation unit of, the, of life. So is the spirit placed in the human at the time of life? This is something we'll have to ask, to explore, to seek further information on. And this would certainly strengthen our argument and debate against the whole issue of abortion. Because when we read the book of Enoch, we see that the smiting of the, the unborn, the fetus in the womb, is a demonic uh, activity that was taught to humans by the, one of the 200 angels that fell that left their first estate and came to the earth. Okay, here's Jeremiah 1, 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. And I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. So here is God telling Jeremiah that I knew you before I formed you. And this brings us back to Genesis in which it says, And God breathed into Adam, and Adam became a living soul. So God had a some place in eternity, and he knew. And in fact, we just read in Psalm 139 that God has a, all our body parts planned out. Everything about us is planned out in, in the eternal realm, and there is a book. There's a book about me, there's a book about you in the eternal realm, and we are known by God, and God has a purpose for each life before we come into the earth. So here again, we have other examples in scriptures. For example, the, uh, the, that God knows us and has a plan for us before birth. We have examples in scriptures like, uh, Samson, the angel appeared to, oh, okay, I'll come to your point in a minute, but Pastor Benny. The angel appeared to his parents, Manoah and wife, and told them specifically uh, what he would be, he would be a Nazarite, etc., and, you know, his role in the earth as a judge to deliver Israel. We think about Jesus and how the, the, the elements of his birth were known intimately to God, that he would be born from a virgin, his exact name. We see the prophets foretelling all through you know, Jewish history about this uh, child and his, the Messiah, his role, etc., uh, there are other scriptures I, I don't have. Let's see who else we could think about. There are other script, ex examples in scripture. For example, John, John the Baptist, the angel Gabriel appeared to his father and revealed to him that he and his wife Elizabeth would have this child and his name, he would be the forerunner, the prophet of the Most High, and that was also prophesied by the prophets. And again, this is an indication that God knew us before he formed us in the belly. Here is evidence in the scriptures that there is knowledge in heaven about humans before they are born in the earth. And he, Here's an, an example. I'm moving on now to a new point that the, 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 the fetus in the womb has a spirit and that that spirit can hear. For example, when Mary visited Elizabeth, the mother of John, she was about, um, um, and uh, on seeing her, there was a greeting, and then Mary, and then Elizabeth, Mary greeted Elizabeth. Then Elizabeth began to prophesy, and as part of the prophecy, she said, "When the voice of your, when I heard you greet me, 
the babe leaped in my womb for joy. I am not going to go into this right now, but we do know that babies, there's scientific evidence, for, for example, that shows, I, I read some research, that shows if you play classical music to your unborn fetus, it helps with the child's intellectual development. You know, there is evidence right there from the example of of uh, Mary and Elizabeth that a fetus can hear in the womb. So Eve, it, it talks about the whole issue of how we deal with the unborn prenatally, how we prepare that child for life, and how we strengthen the spirit of that baby, even with the word of God, even what we surround the baby with, because that baby can hear. Why did John leap in the womb? Because he's a spirit, he's a spiritual being, and he has an existence, had an existence even before birth, and even um, he is conscious, the spirit is alert, and it's living even in the womb. Now, this one might blow you away. I, I was trying to find this reference, but I, I read somewhere recently, if I find it, I'll put it here below this video, about uh, somebody going into the seventh heaven where he saw where is the dwelling of God and the, the dwelling of spirits before they come into the earth. So anyway, I'm not going to delve into that because as I said, I cannot remember where I found that reference. I'll have to look for it again to see if it's a verified reference. You know, humans have been writing books way before the creation of Earth, and um, way before our time, even from creation, the onset, the from creation time. And we know, for example, from the scripture about the book of Enoch, and we know about the book of Jasha, but there were other writers in the earth. Okay, let me see. Pastor Bailey Road says that is why only Adam had the mandate to be fruitful and multiply see why human sexuality is so sacred and significant okay i'm not sure at what point you you wrote that uh, so i i cannot cross reference to what i was saying at the time pastor bailey but uh we know that adam indeed was given a mandate to be fruitful and multiply the earth earth to replenish it and then after the flood, when the earth was recreated, God renewed that commandment to Noah. When you read Genesis 8 and 9, God also told Noah to be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. So we know that is a mandate to human beings. And uh, we need, as I just said, I'm, I'm not really, this is new territory to speak about the human being before birth and you know so the, the the thing that we need to take away is that we are spiritual beings the body is the vehicle that takes us around and the human spirit is a living conscious inner part of us that we need to nurture we need to develop we need to grow and pay attention to so, I know it is Delicia, goddaughter, welcome. <clears throat> so, I just want to thank you for listening. And I pray the blessings of the Lord upon you. In 2019, I pray that the Lord would strengthen you, that he would keep you, that he would, he would lift up the light of his countenance upon you. He would give you peace that you will, we would walk in the paths of righteousness, that God would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ, and that we would be pleasing in his eyes. I pray that God would give you insight into how you're to live your life, insight into uh, how to grow your resources, how to invest how to, you know, create, how to be fruitful, how to multiply, anything you need to multiply. And I pray blessings. Thank you so much for listening. I know that a lot of it 
could be is potentially controversial i agree but as i said it's territory that we do not often tread on so you know if there's anything that i said off i listen again and correct and thank you again please share this video god bless you have a good sleep if you're going back to bed god bless goodbye thank you